Colin here at Norm Trades, and uh, I just started my YouTube recently. Got my Twitter up and moving, Instagram. So if you guys could follow, like, subscribe, um, comment, that would really help me out. Plan on maybe doing a live tomorrow night, or just making another video like this on another topic. Um, today the topic's gonna be my trades from Friday of this week. Um, I took three trades on Friday. Before I get into that, just wanted to let you guys know a couple of things. So, uh, I use Weeble, uh, to chart. Um, I have my referral link. I will have it in the description of uh, this video or in just on my YouTube page in general somewhere, um, in the bio or something like that. I use Weeble and Robinhood. Um, they're both great for beginners. Robinhood, you can't really chart on. Um, it's good to trade with. Obviously, you don't get the best fills. The fills when you buy a contract, and the price might be jumping, moving around very quick. And if you don't, if you buy at market price, if you don't set a limit order, um, you're just going to get filled. Say you're trying to buy it for seven dollars, the price jumps up to nine dollars. You might get filled at nine dollars. That's two dollars extra per contract, and you could already be negative when you buy it. So. Just be careful of that when you're um, trading options, things like that. If you're not a beginner, then you already know that. And obviously, if you're not a beginner, you probably have a certain platform you use, you're comfortable with, and you like the way that it works for you. So um, let's get into, before I go into my trades from Friday, I just want to get into how, how I have my chart set up. So this is the main chart I use, okay? Um, let's go to SPY. Spy right there. Spy the S&P 500 um, index ETF. There's SPX and Spy. Spy is it all consolidated into one. SPX is all the top 500 stocks consolidated as well, but the actual price of each stock is in SPX. So that's why SPX is like a $4,500 ETF. Spy is like $456 right now. So. I like trading SPY the best. A lot of people trade SPX as well. Basically the same thing, just different prices and um, either more expensive or less expensive. So SPY is probably my my niche. That's my favorite stock to trade. I like trading zero data expiration. That means the contract expires that day. Um, they're very volatile. The contracts, if it's not, if the stock isn't moving in the direction you want it to move, then it could deteriorate pretty quickly. I mean, every few minutes, the price could drop down or go up, depending on if you're in the right, if you're going in the right direction. If you have a call option and it's moved $2 upward, I mean, that zero data expiration contract is going to it's gonna move amazingly for you. But if it's going down um, and you're in a call, then it's not going to move that well. You're going to probably be very negative. So be careful of that zero data expirations. Um, even if you're not a swing trader, you're just day trading, it's good to have time on your contracts. If you get a big dip or a move down and you're in calls, you can still hold and you can end up being positive. You know, it's just a small fraction of time where that um, contract was negative. Or it could get worse. If you don't have a stop loss, I suggest you always have a stop loss. Um, <clears throat> that way, if a stock's not going how you want it to go, you have a set stop loss. Say you have a contract that you bought for $100. When you get to negative $20, at $80, you're all out. That's your losses. You don't want to lose no more. That's what it is. So stop loss is basically, um, it's like a safeguard to stop you from losing more money than you want to. And you can set it and not look at the charts the rest of the day. As long as the stock doesn't hit it, you're still in your position and you're good to go. And uh, so stop loss is a great. So SPY, I love to trade it. It's my niche. It's your data expiration. Um, I like buying week out contracts as well. Um, on Weeble here, I use all the time frames: one minute, two minute, three, five, ten, fifteen, thirty, one hour, four hour, daily, week, month. So you always want to check the daily every day. Um, see if it gapped up or down. If it gap up. So when the stock price jumps overnight or jumps down overnight from pre-market and after-market hours, people buying and selling, um, 
gaps tend to always get filled at some point. It's almost like a magnet. I'm covering a lot of information here. I'm going to go deeper into these subjects. I just want, if someone's a beginner out there, to kind of <clears throat> understand a little bit of what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, gap up or gap down, that happens overnight usually. Or it could happen on a two-minute chart, five-minute chart, one-minute chart. The price suddenly moves quickly. Um, and it usually tends to fill those gaps at some point. It could be a day later, a week later. It could be an hour later, you know. If it's on the daily chart, um, obviously it's not going to be an hour. Well, it could be an hour later. Who knows? But, um, okay, spy on Friday. Actually, let's go to Baba. Baba was my first trade on Friday. Um, Baba is a Chinese stock. Um, I like to, I have two charts I mainly use. This is my volume chart. I'm always watching time and sales, volume analysis, order book. That's what I keep up. Obviously, this stuff isn't moving right now. Because it's Saturday night and the market is closed. But during market hours, the tape is flying red and green. That's all the buying and selling, the order numbers, 1,000 shares, 35 shares. The red is selling, the green is buying. Um, I mainly use the one-minute chart all day. I'm checking the 5, 15, 30-minute, one-hour, 10-minute time frames, all that. The one-minute chart is where I watch all the price action. So... Baba, um, it was about 10.30 a.m. One other thing about me is I don't really like to trade the open. So market opens at 9.30. I like to wait a good 15 minutes at least. I mean, sometimes I do get in position right after the market opens. I don't like to, prefer not to. Um, I've had some bad trades right at market opens. You see a, you see a stock just pumping right, right when the market opens. You want to get into it, you enter. And then it just falls out of the sky. I mean, it's happened quite a few times to me when I first started. So I try to wait a little while. I find I trade best um, just intraday, like 11, 12, 1 o'clock, lunchtime hours, lunchtime breakouts. Um, you get a trend. So after a couple hours in the day, you might see the trend. You might see the range. You might see that baba you know is in this range obviously baba was strong on friday um but on a spy usually you'll see the range you'll see the top and the bottom and then it will trade in between or it could it could break resistance and get and go up go up higher or break the support and go down lower you know um but you have that range to kind of gauge where you want to get into a position what you think the stock would do the volume obviously Following your indicators, um, real quick, just on indicators on this chart, I use the 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average, 21 estimated moving average, 9 estimated moving average, VWAP. VWAP is very important. All these moving averages, if you're a beginner, you're not going to understand exactly what they are yet, but um, they act as support, resistance, disengage for where the stock should be. Um, on this main chart that I like to use, I have the MACD down here. When the blue line curls below, it's typically bullish. Excuse me. RSI. When the RSI is over 70, it is overbought. Overbought. So if it's over 70, you could expect a pullback. Um, if it's below 30, then it's oversold. You could expect it to be bought up. So below 30 is a little bullish. Over 70 is bearish. The reason people have all these indicators, it's for their trades. Um, you want to have as many advantages, edges as you can in this market. You know, there's so much money traded every day. There's people that went to school for this for a long time. Um, you can't expect to just, you know, hop into the markets one day and just start winning and taking money from everybody and and just doing the thing i mean you can a lot of people have beginner's luck i did my first ever trade i hit for three thousand uh is on the stock Sava. um i bought about a thousand shares of it got like a three dollar move on it and took profit so but that's a home run right there but that's just beginner's luck you know i did not know what i was doing i wasn't even trading options at the time but anyway um 
Let's have my main stock. I trade Spy, AMD, Tesla, um, QQQ. Um, and then I'll play some earnings here and there. So let's get into Baba. Um, on Friday, it was very strong. Earlier in the week, it's been it's been pretty strong. Earlier in the week, they had some news. Um, the stock died down about five dollars earlier in the week. So it's ninety five dollars support, ninety five dollar area. Um, it died down from about ninety seven seventy five, ninety eight twenty five. Went all the way down to about ninety five, maybe even lower. Touch ninety four eighty something like that. It got bought back up the next day. Okay, to about ninety six. So anyway, Bye Bye had some news earlier in the week. Died down a little bit. It got bought back up. Died down again. Um, held that level. Okay. Huge gap up going into Friday. Um. Huge gap up going into Friday. So. Let's see. So from ninety-five dollars to ninety-seven eighty, something like that. Well, about ninety-six dollars to ninety-eight. So that's about a two-dollar gap up on Baba. It's a pretty significant gap up. So you know, just off of that, uh, there's some news or the stock is just strong. A lot of people trading it, buying it, whatever. I got in. It was about an hour after the market opened, about 10.30, I bought, what did I buy? I bought the $101 call, ended up in the money. So $101 strike, that's the price that I believe it could get to. Um, strikes can be anything, though. You don't buy a strike just because you believe it could get to that price. You buy it for a specific reason of maybe how that contract's moving, the liquidity, things like that. So... That's a whole lesson. I can't get into that at this moment. But I bought the $101 strike call contract. And um, it went from $28 to $78. So let's see where I got in. Um, I got in at, let's see. Okay, I got in right about... Ninety nine thirty, maybe something like that. Wrote it all. I was only in the trade, maybe, maybe twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. And I sold right about one and one. My contract was in the money, so it was a beautiful trade. Um, what was it? About a hundred eighty percent gain, hundred eighty percent return on investment. The contract went from twenty eight dollars to seventy eight dollars. So. I mostly day trade, like I'm in and out positions, it could be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, could be 90 seconds, you know, I will swing trade too, I like holding it overnight, I feel like this is a swing traders market right now, you know, you get them big gap ups or big gap down in the morning, and your contacts all of a sudden in the money, and you made some good good coins, so, um, that was my trade on buy buy. I just saw that it was just so strong after that gap up, and there's a ton of volume. I switched to this chart to check the volume, you know. What was it? 1.74 million shares traded? I mean, that's a lot for Baba. Sometimes SPY doesn't even have that. Obviously, a lot of people trade SPY, so it does have more volume than that usually. But sometimes it doesn't, so that's a lot of people. You want to be in the right area. You want to be in the right stock. So Friday, Baba was the right stock to be in. Um, if you just set your target, set your stop loss, get in at a good position you know, or a good time. Um, let's see what else. I had NEO on Friday as well. That's two Chinese stocks right there. NEO was strong all week. Um, kind of mad at myself. Earlier Monday in the week, I bought a $12.50 call. NEO was at about $11 at the time. It was a $20 contract. Contract ended up running from twenty dollars to about two hundred dollars, so that's about a thousand percent return. If I'm correct, I believe yeah, about a thousand percent return. Um, all I had to do was hold it, forget about it, leave it there, and would have looked up Friday and been up about two hundred dollars just on one contract. 
Neo was strong now all throughout the week. Friday, I saw Neo, and I mean, it was just pumping. And obviously, I already traded Baba, another tiny stock, a ton of volume in Baba, a ton of volume in Neo. Um, and the time of sales is just flashing green, flashing green. I'm looking at my estimated moving averages and everything like that, but just Neo was so strong that, like, I just decided to get in the $15 contract was two dollars i mean that was so cheap i mean two dollars a contract you buy a thousand of them and they end up going to four dollars then you just made you just doubled your money so obviously i'm not buying a thousand contracts but i got in the L on friday um around noon about 14 where did i get in that? right here maybe about no oh, I got in about 14.30, and I wrote it to 14, yeah, I got in about 14.30, and wrote it to about 14.75, oh, is that when it closed? So it closed at 14.78, but when I was in the contracts, Maybe I got in, I got in about, okay, right here. So I got in a little earlier. I got in about $14 and wrote it to about $14.65, $14.60, something like that. The contract went from $2 to $7. It's 250% gain, 250% return on investment. Um, that was a 10-minute trade. I was in there. Like, no, that was maybe a 30-minute trade. Um, I don't trade Neo all the time, but it was the right place to be this week. There's a ton of volume in the stock. Uh, I don't know if I had news the week prior. I know a lot of people been into Neo lately. Neo and Baba. I've always liked Baba. I've traded Baba for the past year or two. Neo, not so much. It was stagnant for a while. It was sitting around ten, nine, eight dollars for a long time. But look at this. I mean, it's just been pumping, and this is. The past few weeks, I mean, it's just nonstop. But this this week itself, how much has it jumped? Let's see, switch charts. Sir. Um, nine ninety seven to fourteen seventy eight. That's a four dollar jump, and the stock is a very cheap stock. So fourteen dollars, a four dollar move on a ten dollar stock. It's only a fifty percent move on the total stock throughout the week. So Nia is one that I enjoy playing once in a while. You know, I'm not in it all the time. Don't want to be in it all the time. I like trading where there's a ton of liquidity, volume, uh, things like that, which is SPY, Tesla, AMD, NVIDIA, you know. Uh, we'll click Roku real quick. I did trade Roku. I got in around $85. It was maybe a 20% gain. Um, it was super strong. They had earnings. I missed it. I had no idea. It didn't even pop up on my chart or anything. I had no idea until it already made uh, like a $10, $12 move throughout the day or whatever it was. Um, and when the stock is moving like that, you don't want to just hop on the train. You could just hop on the train and get lucky and it still move a few more dollars. But sometimes you hop on and the thing just dumps because it's exhausted. Everyone's taking profit. Um, people are starting to short the stock. After such a big move like that, I'd be surprised Monday if this thing keeps going. And the reason it was so strong is it had earnings. They didn't lose. The company didn't lose as much as people thought they would lose. And that's interesting because there's companies that make more than expected and still don't move like that. So for a company to not lose as much as expected and to take off like that's just insane but um yeah i caught a quick trade on Roku on friday i should have stayed in i think i had a 90 dollar call it would have been just about in the money at the end of the day but it was zero data expiration so um it decayed pretty quick um if you held and didn't get the move in the right direction but it did end up moving throughout the later hours in the day and uh so that would have been at least a two, three hundred percent gain that I like that. But it is what it is. I took ten, twenty percent, got out. It was the stock was stagnant for a little while. 
around like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. It just wasn't doing much. It was holding up at that 85 level. I was in probably here, and I took a little profit. Then I grabbed another contract, and it kind of died down. So Roku isn't something that I want to be in all the time. But if there's something that has news, earnings, a catalyst, that's where you want to be. The volume was crazy. 4.3 mil, 7 mil shares traded. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot for a stock like that. That's what a lot of these professionals do. They're going to find the stock that has the catalyst, the news, and they're all going to flock to it, and they're all going to pump the thing up, short it, whatever it may be. you got to have a game plan. I mean, uh, tomorrow night I plan on doing something, maybe my game plan for the week, a short video, something like that. Obviously, this is my first video, so I'm trying to get my name out there, trying to get you guys familiar with me. Uh, I just want to help beginners, anybody that wants to come join the community, talk, chat, uh, just have fun, have a good time, and all make money together. That's what it's about. And I'm just trying to build this thing up, build up the Twitter, Instagram, uh, just have a nice community, maybe have a nice little following, and have fun while doing it, and have us all learn from each other, you know. I can be taught. I'm not a professional. I've only been in the game for so long, you know. I'm learning new things every day. So that's my Baba Neo trade Roku. Uh, the Roku I wasn't too proud of, but um, last trade of the day on Friday was Spy. So Thursday on Spy. Thursday we had a the stock was moving on Thursday. It was moving. It was strong. Four fifty nine forty four was the top of the day. We had some type of news or something. I think it was Japan interest rate, something like that. Um, that just sent spot down and I missed it. I don't know where I was or what I was doing. I think I had puts early in the day. They would have been a thousand percent if I just held them, but obviously I didn't know that news was coming, but I should have been prepared for the news. Um, if you know news is coming, you either get in and at, get in a position or out of position. You gotta be ready. But anyway, spot was super strong. And then the day died down on Thursday. They rode that thing all the way down. About an eight dollar move down to like four fifty two. So after that, I'm sure a lot of people bought more puts and, and got got smoked going into Friday because Friday spy gapped up. So gapped up, like I said earlier, is the stock being bought or sold overnight. And that reflects in the price that it opens at in the morning. And a gap is like, a gap, gaps usually get filled at some point. So it's like a magnet, you know. The stock is going to come back and touch that at some point. It could be days, months, weeks, whatever. But anyway, SPY gapped up going into Friday. Um, SPY was pretty strong on Friday, I believe, right? Let's look at it. The first 30 minutes, look at this big gap up from 453. 453 to 455 30. So that's about a $3 move. Um, so it kind of recovered from that news in Japan or whatever. A lot of people were buying all morning. Let's look at the volume 16.4 mil. Six. Okay. So we had some good volume on Friday. Thursdays, I've noticed, Thursdays are usually when you get a trend day, um, a relative strength day. Thursdays are just like, they're big days. If you look at them throughout the year, I can't go into my chart right now, but Thursdays, you get some big moves. Ever since January, you see Thursdays and there's some big moves that happen. It's just usually a trend day and... I mean, just some big moves happen. I don't know why. Sometimes it's because it's the FOMC or news that happened on Wednesday, and you just get a continuous trend type of day on Thursday. Well, anyway, um, so Friday morning is pretty strong. Open at a, a 455.30, something like that. Topped out about 457.42. Okay, so I saw that range. I see. I saw that. You know, we were strong for the morning, very strong, uh, a couple hours after open. And then SPY started to top out a little bit, you know. And I kept in mind that Thursday, okay, Thursday was strong. Um, we 
got pretty high on Thursday. And then the shorts came in. And I think everyone kind of, a lot of people were probably chasing that baby from Thursday as well. And it probably did work out for them. Because after we topped out 457.50, <clears throat> I got in. So I got my puts ready. I got in about 457. 457.5. I didn't catch the very top 457.60 or whatever. Called 457.5. So I got a 456 put for $20. Okay. Let's get a smaller time frame. 456 put for $20. Um, I just read that thing down. My target was 456 to get the contract and the money. And just a lot of selling happening, a lot of selling. One green candle on the 15 minutes. Um, so I buried that thing down to, I got out at, I got out at about 456.05. That is where I got out at 456.08, something like that. So they are battling, the, the Bears and the um, Bulls were battling. Let's look at five minutes. So they're battling up here. Right around. Right around this area. And I thought maybe it could hold support, turn that into some support and pop back up. So I just wanted to be safe, take my profits. It was a hundred 190% gain. Twenty dollar contract of fifty-eight dollars. Um, you gotta take that. You can't go after home runs all the time. You can't like I mean, doing that, you're just going to end up negative. You're just going to end up hitting your stop loss. You're just going to end up wanting to quit trading. Obviously, if you're in the markets every day and you're busting your butt to learn, um, be the best you can be, you're going to get the home runs. They're going to happen without you even trying to get them. But the base hits, the doubles, the triples, they're going to add up. I mean, that's what it's all about. But So I got in about 456.6. Uh, 456, uh, 457.6, shorted all the way to about 456, 456 was my target, got out about 456.10, something like that, and the Bears and Bulls were battling there, got out, took profit, I look up, I was done trading for the day, look up, hour later, we, t we go down another dollar. That $20 contract turned about $112, something like that. That would have been a 500% gain, I think. That would have been just an amazing trade. Could have held. Mad I didn't hold. But you know what? I had a great day on Friday. Um, so those were my three, four trades on Friday. Uh, one thing about Friday is you don't want to go into the weekend like negative, you don't want to have a terrible day on Friday and then it ruins your weekend and you're just bothered and you're going to chase the next week and it, it just can affect things at home, it can affect your family life, whatever it is, I've done it in the past, you know, I had a very bad day on Friday and it was a very unpleasant weekend, it can linger over into the next week and you could just spiral, you know, so... You don't want to chase on Fridays. You don't want to over-trade on Fridays. You don't want to revenge trade on Fridays. You never want to do that stuff in general. But Fridays is very important because that can just, it's going to carry over into the weekend. So, like I said, there's my three trades. I had a bye bye call, 101 call, 180% NEO, $15 call for $2 contract, turned to $7, 250%. Spot put in the afternoon, uh, 456 put from $20 to $58, 190%. Um, so yeah, that was my day on Friday. Um, I'm going to start going over more stuff here soon. This is my first video, so I just want to go over options, stocks, risk management, price action. Um, just trying to build financial freedom, be the best we can be, you know, learn from each other, uh, have a nice community. One day I might do a little Weeble tutorial video just to help people figure out Weeble because I had a hard time when I first got on there. But once you get familiar with the indicators, um, the different charts, things like that, then you're all set.
You got the time and sales up here, top right corner. This thing's flashing green and red during the day when the market's open. <clears throat> and then the order book down here, that thing's flashing as well. And then you got your positions. I had a snap lotto earlier in the week, GM lotto. Those were pointless. Um, just earnings lottoes. A lotto is basically just a gamble, just a shot in the dark. Okay, this company has earnings coming up. Let me just buy a call because it could possibly rock it, you know. Things like that. That's what um lottoes are. So, and then on my main chart, you got the moving averages, all that. Like I said, I use the RSI MACD. When the MACD curls under the blue line, curls under, it's usually bullish. You want to use, you don't want to have a million indicators. Because that can throw you off. See traders that have 20, 30, 40 indicators. You're looking at all that stuff. And if they're not lining up correctly, you're going to miss a position. You're going to miss a move. I like my four or five moving averages, my VWAP, my RSI, my MACD. And then I have my other chart for my volume, all that stuff. And then on top of that, I'm reading time and sales. And sometimes I don't even look at all that stuff. Obviously, I'm always going to look at the support, resistance, the I'm always changing one minute, two minute, five minute, but I stay on the one minute time frame to read the price action because I've gotten very good at reading the price action. Um, but yeah, the different time frames, the the EMAs, the moving averages, they all help you. But if you go too crazy with all of that, then it can hurt you in the long run because all of them aren't going to line up perfectly all the time. They're not. They're just not going to. And then you want to read the time and sales. The tape is very important. And when that thing starts speeding up at the end of the day, um, it can tell you a lot. So this week coming up, let's see. This week coming up, we have a ton of earnings because it is earnings season right now. So Monday, we have SoFi, uh, Alliance. Rambus, Lattice, Republic, CVR Energy. I'm not too familiar with all the companies. CNA, Community Bank. Tuesday, we got AMD. That's a big one. I love AMD. Right now, it's just stuck in a range. That's just like been bothering me. Cause I, like, I want to think, I want to see that thing get up to 120, 130. AMD, the past few weeks, have just been just sitting in this 107 to 115 level it did break out last week to 121 and the right as the market opened and shot right back down um so amd earnings tuesday uber pfizer starbucks caterpillar pinterest JetBlue, sun power elf solar edge pioneer wednesday cvs paypal shopify shopify is a good one i like that stock i had a lot of equity in that um, Robin Hood, Etsy, um, Thursday, Apple, Amazon, those are the Expedia. They can move the market, depending on what earnings they have, uh, good or bad. Coinbase, ooh, that's a good one. We saw what Coinbase did a couple weeks ago on the XRP Ripple news. They said Ripple XRP, which is a cryptocurrency. Um, they won a lawsuit in court that sent Coinbase up $30 in one day. There's people that had a $2 contract for Coinbase that turned it into $1,000 by the end of the day. They were like $90 calls. Went from $2 to like $1,200. If you had that $200 in that Coinbase $90 contract on that day, that would have been like $200,000. Or $50,000 or something like that. It's insane. So, um, But Coinbase Thursday, let's see. Airbnb, Block, which is Square. I really like Square. That's a good one. Wiss. And then Friday, Nicola, Magna, Frontier, ACM. So this week's going to be a big week with earnings. Um, gonna going to try to do a video maybe tomorrow night or something like that. And I want to start, I just want to start putting out more videos, do some live, maybe some live trading during the week. I'm going to put some focus energy and all this stuff, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and get this thing going. So I appreciate y'all for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Appreciate it.